Welcome back. I'm sorry, but we're unable to disclose any personal information about our clients to a third party. This was the first thing my agent said to me when I arrived at the real estate agency that had helped me sign my current lease. How do I pronounce this? Chloe Wonderfolk Realty. Okay. I'd chosen this agency simply because it was the first one that caught my eye. But the name was so fanciful, I often had trouble remembering it. That is indeed a strange name for a real estate. But that was hardly important right now. Well, can you make an exception? I really need to know. As I said, we cannot. They're really strict about this sort of thing these days. You know trouble's always right around the corner if a client's information gets leaked. He looked to be on the younger side. Maybe a bit younger than me. And I could tell he was getting sick of me already. But I held my ground. Listen, okay? Anyone in my shoes would be scared out of their minds, hearing those creepy noises from what's supposed to be an empty apartment. I'm only asking because I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. I mean, that does seem like a reasonable request, but at the same time, I understand the real estate can't just willy-nilly hand out information. Why don't you try asking the landlady? She lives right there on the same property, doesn't she? I already tried that, and she won't tell me. Why do you think I'm here asking you? <laughs> if she won't tell you, then obviously we're not at liberty to, either. Judging from his tone, he was used to dealing with this sort of thing. I fixed him with a sharp glare. But just then, another client walked in, family in tow. Welcome! Her voice casually breaks the tension hanging in the air. I'm sorry I can't help you. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave. You think this is a joke? I didn't come here to mess around. After everything I'd been through, in my brand new apartment no less, I wasn't going anywhere. Thanks to your agency, I live in a place where I'm too scared to sleep at night. Don't you think you ought to do something about that? Um, well, I... Never underestimate the backbone of a woman who works freelance. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I knew exactly how to handle this. My voice echoed through the office, and my agent paled. I shot a quick glance around, and sure enough, the family who had just walked in was now looking nervously in our direction. And I knew the agent had noticed this too. Oh, she's clever. So, uh, of course. Our agency will do everything in its power to resolve this situation. Right this way, please. Looking utterly defeated, the agent led me into a cubicle in the back corner of the office. Clearly, he knew he was at the end of his rope. The area was furnished with two couches facing each other. Perhaps this was where they held business negotiations. The agent gestured for me to sit on one side then spoke in a low voice. I'll be right back. As he disappeared beyond the partition, the receptionist brought me a cup of tea. By the time I'd taken my first sip, the agent reappeared with a file folder in hand. Look, please don't tell anyone I showed you this, okay? The agent flipped through the folder looking far more rattled than before. I glanced at the name tag affixed to his chest. Sorry about this, Hirai-kun. I swear I'm not trying to be a bitch, but 
I don't really have any other choice. So she's still talking. So what happened with whoever used to live in apartment 202? Is it just me or is like her voice also seems somewhat lower than the others? Like, I can often hear the other voices, but I can't hear hers, which means I usually start speaking when I think she's done, but she's not actually done. About that. Truth be told, even I don't know the details. What? Then what's the point of? Just hear me out, okay? Our agency first started leasing for your complex four years ago. At the time, 202 was already off the market. I see. So what can you tell me? Nervously, Hirai-kun continued to leaf through the folder until he found what he was looking for. There, he pulled something free from the paperclip and slid it across the table. What is this? A business card? <laughs> this is the company that handled the complex before us. Not that they're around anymore, though. What happened? Oh. The CEO hanged himself. It was a family business, you see. And he was running the whole show himself. But his house is right next door to... Oh, the music just suddenly got very loud. But his house is right next door to where the company used to be, so you might be able to ask his wife about it. That makes sense. So, how long ago did he, uh, pass away? Must have been four years ago, yeah. He was good friends with our CEO, which is how most of his listings ended up with us after the fact. That's all I can tell you. Thank you so much. The music suddenly got very loud, what's going on? The fact that the complex's previous real estate agency's CEO, oh my gosh, that is a complex sentence, had done that felt like a huge revelation. Maybe it was worth my, ti m worth my time to poke a little further. Meanwhile, Hirai couldn't let out a sigh of relief, but unfortunately, he wasn't rid of me quite yet. Can I ask just one more thing? What is it? Regarding my apartment, who was the previous tenant at Chatelet Roman 201? What is with these interesting names? Two o one, you say? Well, before you moved in, it was leased out to a local bank chain. A young woman lived there until last year or so. What was she like? Oh, I don't know. Fairly young. I think her name was Hisamatsu-san. Hisamatsu. My upstairs neighbor shared that same surname. Something about that gave me pause. Say, Hirai-san. Yes? Wait, how do you know my name? It's right there on your name tag, silly. Listen, has 201 been through a lot of tenants lately? Hirai Kun frowned at my question. Clearly, he'd been hoping I wouldn't ask. 
201と203特に201は僕が受け持った最初は入居してもすぐに出ていく人が多かったです Well, yes, both 201 and 203 but 201 especially so Ever since I got assigned to it, it's seen quite a few people come and go almost immediately. In Hisamatsu-san's case, she was only living there because her company had leased it out. That's why the landlady had to raise the early move out penalty. Isn't that the sort of thing you're supposed to tell a new tenant up front? There's no legal obligation to tell a short term tenant unless the situation requires for it. After all, there haven't been any incidents in that one. He had a point. Regardless, I got the sense I'd learned all I could from this lead. I downed the rest of my cold tea, then stood up from the couch. Instantly, I could see relief flood over Hirai kun's face. Thank you for all your help, Hirai san. You're welcome, but please don't tell anyone I. Don't worry, I won't. Oh, but I might be back if I think of any more questions. <laughs> Give me a break. I could see, please spare me, written all over his face, but I ignored it and walked out of the cubicle. The family from earlier was still in the office and they looked at me with concern as I approached. I put on my best smile and turned to look at Hirai kun behind me. <laughs> Thank you so much. The customer service here is absolutely incredible. Now I can sleep soundly. <laughs> Look at this woman. My deepest apologies for the trouble. I'll be in touch next time I need anything. Of course, we look forward to assisting you. The family looked relieved to see that the hard working agent had successfully resolved the complaint. With that little matter taken care of, I headed for the door. Thank you again. Come back anytime. Come back anytime. Hirai kun called after me, his voice stiff and robotic. Okay, we have a tiny bit of progress. I arrived at that real estate agency, Koyama Realty. A little before noon. I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing here, or what I planned to ask, but at this point, anything was preferable to just cowering in fear. The building was plain and box shaped. One look, and it was obvious the place was closed down. The windows were dusty, obscuring the interior from view. Not that I really wanted to be peering around inside a dark office in the first place. The company was located right there on the CEO's personal property. A high fence extended from the office building and looped around the house next to it. As I walked along the fence, I soon arrived at a massive gate, beyond which I could see a large, old fashioned house. The gate itself was locked up tight, but there was an intercom system affixed to the fence. I rang the doorbell without hesitation. Inside, I could faintly hear the chime echoing through the house. All at once, memories from yesterday flashed through my mind, sending goosebumps pricking up my arms. The situation was uncannily similar to my experience with apartment 202. Maybe she wasn't home at the moment. I rang the doorbell a second time. No answer. If you're looking for Koyama san, she's in the hospital. <laughs> the sudden voice behind me made me jump. <laughs> I whirled around to find an unfamiliar woman standing there. Her arms were laden with shopping bags, suggesting she was on her way home from a trip to the grocery store. Her apron was embroidered with the name Alessa O. 
Perhaps that was her name. What's with all these strange names? You're here to visit Koyama-san, yes? Well, I'm afraid she's laid up at Hashida General Hospital. Is she sick? Can't say. Haven't seen her since the ambulance came and took her away. They say she's been getting worse and worse ever since her husband passed. <laughs> There's a term for folks like this. Gossipy old neighbor ladies. Indeed, that's a mouthful. Perhaps coming here was worth my time after all. How did her husband pass? Oh, you haven't heard? The man hanged himself. Sure enough, it seemed Alessa O was more than willing to talk. So far, so good. At this rate, maybe I could get something useful out of her. He hanged himself? Was his business not doing so well? <laughs> Don't be silly. He was practically the king of this district. He could sell a property on his name alone. Why do that then? Well, just between you and me, yeah, yeah, you and me and everyone in a 10 mile radius, I thought. This woman is so super judgmental of everybody, considering especially what she's doing herself, oh my gosh. Naturally, I kept that little comment to myself. <gasps> they say he was possessed. Yes, we're getting to the good parts. Possessed? By what? <laughs> A ghost, obviously. Just before he died, Suzuki-san across the street across the street heard him screaming. It's all my fault. Please forgive me. I wonder if he got on someone's bad side then. I mean, with all that money he made, he was bound to land himself in trouble at some point. Plus, I heard he was quite the philanderer. No kidding. They say he had a mistress living in one of his apartment properties too. If you ask me, it's no wonder he got himself possessed. It all sounded like typical neighborhood gossip, but something about it stuck out to me. I was tempted to stick around, but I knew ladies of her caliber were likely to go on for hours if given the chance. <laughs> Say, I think I'd like to check in on Koyama-san. Could you tell me the way to the hospital? All hospitals are basically the same. People milling about in a frenzy, many of them clearly unwell. I knew better than to expect any different. That was a hospital's whole purpose, after all. But I still didn't like it. All in all, it felt so unsanitary. Arriving at the general reception area, I inquired after Mrs. Koyama and was promptly asked to state my relation to her. 
Her husband was my real estate agent. It was a total half ass lie, of course, but the receptionist directed me to the internal medicine ward nonetheless. Fair warning, don't expect her to talk to you. Huh? Oh. She's been in a vegetative state for the past year. Oh my god. That meant my trip here was utterly wasted, including the bouquet of get well flowers I'd brought as a pretext. Well, seeing as I brought her these flowers, I might as well check in on her anyway. I'll just put them on the table and be on my way. Suit yourself. Ignoring her unfriendly response, I headed off into the internal medicine ward. I mean, I don't think anything about that was unfriendly, but this woman is incredibly judgmental, as we've seen. A drab, sterile smell lingered in the patient's room. Koyama-san was bone thin, with tubes hooked into every part of her, sleeping peacefully. I set the small vase of flowers down on the side table and gazed at her for a moment. This lead may have been a dead end, but hey, I tried. After that, I promptly turned and left the room. Chapter 8 By the time I arrived back at the general reception area, I realised I needed to call one of my clients. More specifically, my sister. She worked for a small-time magazine publisher. As it happened, I was in charge of running their website. But I wasn't going to have internet access until tomorrow, and I'd forgotten to tell her I wouldn't have the latest site update ready until tomorrow night at the earliest. I checked the time. 2pm. I knew she might be in a meeting, but I decided I could just leave a voicemail if it came to that. Thankfully, after a few rings she picked up. Hello? Shoko? Sorry, sis. Unless this is an emergency, can it wait? Just wanted to let you know the site update will go live tomorrow night, that's all. In a meeting? No, I'm at a funeral. A funeral? I struggled to keep my voice down. It wasn't exactly the sort of thing one ought to be shouting in the middle of a hospital lobby, after all. One of our co-workers, um, passed away. Her uncharacteristically hesitant tone set off red flags in my mind. Anyway, I'll call you back later. And I'll pass on the news about the side update. Thanks. Bye. After the call ended, I stared at my phone for a moment. Something wasn't right. But right now I had no way of figuring it out. I'd just have to ask Shoko for more details later. With that taken care of, the only option left, loath as I was to admit it, was to go home and dive into work. But just as I was about to head for the front entrance, someone tapped me on the shoulder. Hmm? Hmm? Aha! Yuki-san! I knew it was you! I turned to find my upstairs neighbour, Hisamatsu-san, standing there, grinning from ear to ear. We certainly seem to be crossing paths a lot these days. You sick or something? Wait, so... The real estate guy was having an affair with the Hisumatsu-san, who was in 202. Something terrible happened there and she died and then she possessed him and then killed him or made him do that to himself. And then this Hisumatsu-san is like her brother or something. And he moved into the apartment upstairs to be near her ghost. And he's like keeping an eye on everybody that comes in to the apartment. Let's come back to that at the end and see how I did. <laughs> no, no, just came to visit someone. 
What about you? Yeah, just passing through myself. It's a stone's throw from my campus after all. His tone was light and casual. It sounded to me like he came here a lot. So, who was he visiting? Admittedly, I was a tiny bit curious. Who are you here to see? Oh, it's my older sister. Can I ask what's wrong? Sure, I don't mind. He smiled like it was the most trifling thing in the world. My sister is sick. Here. He indicated his temple. What? Like a tumor? Or... No, no, I guess you could say the problem is more in here. As he spoke, he prodded my chest, just above my heart. Startled, I covered myself protectively, and he snickered. <laughs> I'm sorry, I swear, I wasn't trying anything funny. What do you mean, the problems with her heart? It's her soul, really. Her spirit is broken, and her mind is destroyed. She's been hospitalized for nearly a year. <gasps> is she a living spirit? Is she actually still alive, but she's a living spirit? That's awful. How did it happen? Maybe it wasn't right of me to pry. But somehow, it felt like Hisamatsu-san was inviting me to ask. Did you visit your real estate agency today? What? The change of subject caught me entirely off guard. Hisamatsu-san shot me a highly amused look. I got the distinct sense this little punk was messing with me on purpose. I mean, you told me you were going, right? Right. Yeah, I stopped by. Find out anything useful? Kind of, but not really. Hisamatsu-san smirked like he'd seen it coming. See, my sister. Her name's Hisamatsu Noriko. Yeah? Ha! She used to live in apartment 201. What? Okay, we were close. Apartment 201. Your apartment. Wait, but... Oh. Just then, I remembered Hirai-kun had told me that a young woman by the name of Hisamatsu had lived in 201 before me. As it dawned on me, Hisamatsu-san's expression shifted. So they told you, huh? They didn't tell me she was your sister, though. Did they tell you what that apartment did to her? What my apartment did to his sister? What was that supposed to mean? What do you mean by that exactly? Evidently, Hisamatsu-san had anticipated my question. Grinning, he shot me a double thumbs up. What do you say we get out of here? Okay, chapter 9. This is the perfect spot to end. We're going to end this chapter here. So, so far we found out that Hisamatsu-san, who lives upstairs, had a sister who lived in 201. The apartment we're living in and we are living in now. She apparently lost her mind. She's in the hospital. Understandable if she's living next to an incredibly apartment haunted. Incredibly haunted apartment. How did I mix those words up? And then also apparently the former real estate agency guy was having an affair with someone, presumably the one who lived in 202. All right, we're getting information. We're getting places. I'm intrigued. I must find out what's happening. Come back next week. 
we'll head even further into this actually interesting story. I'm really enjoying this one. I like it. I'll see you guys then. See ya.